Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and AMD just released the source code for uh, the Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or AFSR2. Uh, this is a very cool technology, along with uh, NVIDIA's DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling, I believe it stands for. These are two technologies that enable you to basically render your graphics at a lower resolution and scale them up. They have probably the two most important graphic technologies in the last couple of generations. And yes, I'm looking at U-Ray tracing. And here you can see it in action. This sample shows uh, just kind of a sample scene. We can kind of look around it and so on. But what I'm going to do is turn a magnifier on and we're going to magnify this little area right over here, this plane. So you can see the effects. I'll get some of the text in it as well. All right, so there we go. So you can see, oops, right here. Let's get the engine and some text in. All right, good. So that spot right there, I'll hit the L key to lock it in place. So now what you can see is right now we've got FSR2 currently running. Now one thing to keep in mind, there's also FSR1. And this isn't going to actually replace FSR1, but you'll see the results. So you see the jagginess of the text down here, and you'll see the frame rate up here. We're looking at uh, 220 frames per second up here. And now I'm going to go ahead and switch this to FSR2. You're going to see immediately we get better results, but we also see a significant drop in the frame rate. So there's a pretty good chance what you're going to want to use is either or. Like there's there's reasons to still use FSR1. There are different technologies and they occur at different times in the, the rendering pipeline. Another thing you'll notice when I switch back to FSR uh, or by cubic, okay, FSR, you'll notice TAA or temporal anti-aliasing is an option. Well, with the way that FSR2 happens, no longer can you do temporal anti-aliasing. So what you're doing basically is you're taking the original native image. So here we go. This is native, nothing happening to it. You're seeing here, uh, we're getting 110, 120 frames per second. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to switch this over to FSR. So this is basically rendering it at a lower resolution and then using maths and sciences, etc., to scale it up. Now, there's a big difference between FSR and NVIDIA's DLSS. One is you're seeing this right now run on NVIDIA hardware, whereas when you're dealing with DLSS, it doesn't. It will only run on NVIDIA hardware. So this works on AMD and on uh, NVIDIA. Big deal there. Also, um, it will work on the platform platforms as well, and it doesn't require machine learning. So you don't have to send this off to uh, AMD supercomputers to make it work. So there's a lot of things going for FSR, for sure. So you got here, this is the 2.0. Right now we're running in performance mode. That means it's doing a two times scaling. We can also switch it to quality mode. Again, look here at the text in general as we switch over to quality. And you can see you definitely get better rendering, but you'll also notice you're getting not much of a frame rate detail. So you're only like getting five or 10 frames per second over the native sample at this point in time. Whereas if we come here and we go to ultra performance or three times sampling, the quality gets a little bit worse. We're going to notice unless you're zooming in, you don't really see it. But look what just happened to our frame rate. We're now at 170 frames per second. And I come over here and I could go switch to FSR1 and we'll put this in ultra performance mode. And you're definitely going to see a decay in quality. Like for sure, it looks bad. But look at these frame rates. So it's definitely a trade-off quality versus precision versus um, frame rate, basically. Uh, but it gives you all the controls you need to do it. You also have the idea uh, option. So watch down here again. Look right there at this point. You can turn uh, dynamic resolution on, and I can turn RCAS sharpening on. So I'm going to turn sharpening on. And you're going to immediately see the results of that. We also could turn on dynamic resolution, uh, which, again, makes the image look really good. But it actually takes the frame rate and it makes it a little bit less reliable on the whole. So this is the demo that's available. If you want to go check out what uh, FSR 1 and 2 and etc. look like on your machine, uh, you can play around with the various different settings that are available here. By the way, there's also uh, the updated version of Sponza. Uh, you can see it in action here as well. This new version of Sponza, though, uh, it's super uh, high resolution. It's cool that they're using the new version here. Uh, but, and again, you can zoom in. You can see the text over there. So here we are, Ultra Performance FSR2. Let's go switch to quality. And then sharpening on, sharpening off. You can immediately see the results of it right here. But you're also going to see the results of it right here. And you're going to find sometimes, like, again, quality mode FSR2 uh, versus... Um, just basically native, you're not seeing a huge frame rate change there. So sometimes it doesn't really help you, but you do have this wealth of options. And again, you still have FSR1 as an option available. You have two now, which again, 
where it is in the rendering pipeline does make it impossible to use temporal anti-aliasing. All right, so here we are uh, at the uh, web page for the uh, Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2. Kind of goes through some of the details of it. Um, it's available for DirectX 12 and Vulkan. There is an Unreal Engine 4.x and 5 plugin coming soon to the Unreal Engine marketplace. Um, so the latest version, again, just dropped. The source code is available up on GitHub. We'll get back to that in just a second. In terms of features, it, it basically uh, is replacing temporal anti-aliasing. So it, it delivers similar or better than native image quality using temporal data. Uh, Anti-aliasing creates it's high quality images. There's no machine learning required. It is cross platform, so you can use this on a variety of different AMD devices, but you can also use it on NVIDIA devices and on consoles. And considering that AMD is basically powering both the PlayStation and the, um, the Xbox this generation, you can pretty much rely on this technology and it is open source with the source code available. In terms of how it works, um, it's space magic in some ways. Like again, it's using a number of buffers. It's rendering at a lower resolution. It does its super magic to create a higher resolution version of it and spits it out. So there are some differences uh, in terms of how Fidelity affects super resolution two works compared to one. Again, it replaces temporal anti-aliasing and any post-processing required anti-alias as the input needs to be uh, post upscaled. Also any post-processing effect that requires the depth buffer, depth, depth, depth buffer will need to be pre upscaled as well. So it does change the way that your, your workflow works a little bit to make it work. Again, the nice thing here is there are no machine learning requirements with DLSS. You have to actually submit uh, your game over to NVIDIA so that their machine learning things can figure out how to do the upscaling for you. Uh, this doesn't use machine learning at all, which is actually quite cool. Uh, there are a variety of different quality modes. We saw those in action in the demos. So this is the amount of upscaling that's going to occur obviously the higher the quality the lower the speed gain and then the ultra performance you're going to get kind of the worst uh results um visually but massively better frame rates so now the cool thing about fsr and dlss is it enables um you to basically support older hardware with very minimal work, right? Because you just turn on a slider, the, the results don't actually look that bad. Now, where I do think it'd get interesting though, is when you start pairing something like this with uh, something like Stadia or GeForce Now, where you're kind of doing the same thing twice. So when you've got that double layer of uh, encoding of your image, is it going to break down? I'm not actually sure what the answer is there. Uh, you can see a number of examples. Uh, again, the demo is probably the best way to go about it if you want to check it out yourself. But here you can see native versus uh, FSR. Uh, again, there's drill downs for all these various different options. Death loop uh, uses FSR and you can see again the results in action here. Not, not a really huge difference. Uh, it's actually almost imperceptible. So that's why I actually like, I guess that's the idea they want you to give. It looks basically the exact same as native. So again, as I mentioned, it is being used in Deathloop. Uh, this is an open source project. Uh, so you can see here, the source code is available. It's under the MIT license. There are instructions available here on how to go ahead and build it, get things started, much more details about how things technically work and how to implement uh, various different features. Uh, you can also build the sample from here. The cool thing here is if you go back to uh, here, uh, Okay, I did not mean to have a video playing in the background. Let's get that video stopped. Uh, when you come back to uh, the homepage for it right here, you can actually go ahead and download the example uh, that we saw in action earlier on available right here. So if you literally just want to check it out, see how it works on your hardware, that's probably where we want to go is go to the samples. If you want to go check out the code, it is available on GitHub. And of course, the documentation is available as well. There will be a plugin for Unreal Engine available soon as well. If you want to go ahead and check it out that way, I do not know when we will see this come to Unity, uh, hopefully soon. Uh, but yeah, that is... AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2 source code now available up on GitHub under the MIT license. Again, there's some in-depth documentation on how to work with it, uh, how to handle various different um, scenarios and code and so on. Uh, this does work with the major rendering API, so it does work with both uh, DirectX 12 and with Vulkan. It doesn't seem to support DirectX 11, which I guess makes sense at this point in time. Uh, I'd be interested to hear what you think. What do you think of uh, Super Resolution 2, Fidelity Effects Super Resolution 2? What do you think of DLSS? Which one do you think gives the better results? And do you like the... Um you know, platform open nature of the uh, AMD offering, or do you like the results of the NVIDIA offering better? Be curious to hear. Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.